What's up guys? Welcome back to our channel. My name is Carissa. Today we're going to talk all about my symptoms after our frozen embryo transfer all the way to the beta, which is the pregnancy test. We're going to go day by day and I'm going to tell you day by day what I felt and hopefully this helps you or you know, gives you some kind of um, a peace of mind if you're in the same two week wait. So we had a 10 day wait instead of a actual two week wait of 14 days to find out if we were pregnant. So grateful that I cut down the time. Um, spoiler alert, if you're new, our frozen embryo transfer did work and we are pregnant. As of today, we are 18 weeks pregnant and so grateful. So grateful because it has been a long six and a half year road with two losses, lots of uh, heartache, lots of fertility treatment, an already failed IVF cycle. And so this almost felt like this was our last shot. Um, if you're new or if you haven't yet and you've just, you know, been hanging around, go ahead and subscribe below. Give us a thumbs up. It uh, definitely helps smaller channels like ours to be seen. If you had a different symptom than I had, let us know. Um, you know, I may have had a different symptom during my two week wait period but it could definitely help somebody else or give somebody else a peace of mind or some comfort during their, their waiting period. I mean, I read comments of YouTube videos, so I know other people do as well. So anyway, let's get started. So the first day after our frozen embryo transfer, I started feeling a lot of fatigue. That was the first thing, you know, the only thing I really thought about with that was, well, I'm on bed rest and I'm on progesterone and oils still. I'm on all of a bunch of medications still after the frozen embryo transfer. So I figure, you know, it's just a side effect from the medication, from having a transfer done with your body. Like I didn't think anything of it. So I was like, well, also I'm on bed rest. I'm just sitting around. So what happens when you sit around? You get tired. <laughs> At least I do. So anyway, that is my first symptom of day one was fatigue. Day two, after the transfer is when it starts to get a little interesting, day two. So not only did I have the fatigue, but it was like amplified. I could not keep my eyes open. It was like, man, I just couldn't get enough sleep. All that beauty breath, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, definitely didn't help the crow's feet, <laughs> that's okay. Um, but then I started feeling cramping and I have been pregnant twice before. Um, and I had never had any feeling like that. However, I had never done an embryo transfer. We have done an IVF cycle before, but we had never done a transfer. We didn't get embryos with our first frozen embryo, well, with our first IVF cycle. So this was our first frozen embryo cycle. First, our first transfer ever. And I was getting cramping and you know, I was like, okay, well this is different. It's not like period cramping. It's like, I don't know. It was just like, mild constant cramping and uh i liked it because it was different i had already been pregnant twice before had two losses and it kind of was like okay something something's going on something's working maybe baby's getting cozy in there you know <laughs> what was that <laughs> and also i also had on the sides of my here i'm gonna sit up on the sides over here, I would get little twinges of like pulling of, of like some pain. It wasn't sharp or anything like that. It was just some little twinges. I was like, okay, something's going on. That was my first symptom where I really thought maybe this worked, but I wasn't sure. I had never had a transfer before. Maybe it could have been just the fact that, you know, I had the transfer, oh, the whole process. So. I didn't think too much into it yet, but I was happy and excited because I had never felt anything like this during a two week wait period, even though our wait was 10 days. Day three, I felt more fatigue and more cramping. The cramping again was constant, mild, the twinges of pain, nothing I was concerned about. I wasn't bleeding, I didn't have any spotting at all. Um, and the fatigue again stayed consistently <laughs> very high couldn't keep my eyes open <laughs> and man did i enjoy that bed rest so those were on day three my only two symptoms that i had day four i have a new symptom okay so the fatigue is still here the fatigue where i cannot keep my eyes open i'm just like eyes shut um 
and where my constant cramping and the twinges of pain that I had, um, that was constant as well, the mild, you know, cramping pain I had. But then I also had butterflies. Like I felt this constant nervousness or this constant butterfly and I was like, but I don't feel anxious. I don't feel nervous. I'm not looking at symptoms. I'm not looking, you know, at, uh, I, I didn't, I definitely did not do any of that. I didn't look at any symptoms. I'm not looking at anything that's gonna stress me out. I was just like, this is weird. It's like I'm getting ready to ride on a roller coaster or something. And I definitely wasn't. So day four is when the butterfly started. Maybe that's a pregnancy symptom. I don't know if Brian looked it up, uh, but when I had shared about that on Instagram, a lot of other women had felt the same thing. So it could have been baby. <laughs> well, now I think it is because obviously it worked. So day five after our frozen embryo transfer, I have the fatigue still where I can't keep my eyes open. I have the butterflies still. I have the cramping, the mild cramping, the side cramping. And day five is when the chin breakouts start. If you've been around for a while, or maybe you've watched some of our older videos and you're newer around here, um, my skin has gone up and down this entire journey with injecting hormones and you know going through miscarriages and your hormones just being out of whack. I have gone through ups and downs of clear skin and really, really bad skin. So about six months before our transfer, when we were doing our, um, our IVF cycle, our egg retrieval, my surgeries, our mock cycle, and then our transfer, my skin was surprisingly clear. I don't know what happened, but it, it got cleared up. Then by day five, after our transfer, little chin pimples started popping up. Now it wasn't as bad as it's been in the past. So I'm not like, I wasn't upset about it. I was just like, okay, this kind of reminds me of our second pregnancy where my skin just blew up. Our first one, it did not. My second one, it did. It got so bad. And so I thought, okay, hormones are changing. Something's going on. This is, you know, this is some good stuff. Uh, and it wasn't too bad, so I wasn't, you know, upset about it. I would, I would take it any day if it meant that I was pregnant. So day six is when I finally get another new symptom. So it's like all the symptoms that I start with, I keep, and then I just add one to the list. So, so I still had the fatigue, I still had the cramping, you know, the twinges of pain, I still had the butterflies and some chin acne, but now a new symptom that I had was dry mouth and I was so thirsty. I didn't think anything of it. I didn't even know this was a symptom <laughs> of, or it could be a potential symptom of pregnancy. So I was on the phone FaceTiming with one of my best friends and I'm sitting there talking to her and I was like, man, my mouth is really dry. I need to drink something. But I had been drinking water constantly all day. So I'm talking to her and I'm drinking more water, but nothing, I, I can't, it's like I can't get enough water. And uh, I just thought, okay, that's weird. You know, I just need more water. It's, it's December, you know, no big deal. Yeah, turns out one of my friends told me who is a NICU nurse, she told me that that is one of her first symptoms when she's pregnant is the dry mouth. Uh, and so when I had told her that that was one of my symptoms, she didn't tell me this then, but she told me later that she knew I was pregnant because that is her first one that she's had. So if you have the same, that could be good news. And I hope it is. <laughs> day seven was pretty much the same as day six. So I still was crampy, you know, the mild cramping, still no bleeding. I had the fatigue still, but it wasn't as bad as the first few days or the first four days where I just couldn't keep my eyes open. Um, I had a little bit more energy. Uh, but I was, you know, I was still tired. I had the butterfly still, some dry mouth, um, thirsty all the time. Eat, nothing would quench my thirst. Uh, and then I still had some chin acne. It was getting better, but I still had some chin acne as well. All right, day eight is when we add another addition to what we already have as symptoms. So I have the cramping, the mild cramping, still no bleeding. Um, I have the butterflies, I have the dry mouth and the, you know, the thirst, uh, a little bit of fatigue still and some of the chin acne, it is getting better, but I still had it. And then what happens? I get a headache 
and some nausea. Now, remember, this is only a week after my transfer, so I was like, that is way too early for nausea, right? And if you've seen me on my Instagram stories or oh, maybe, I don't know if I've shared it as much here, but I get headaches pretty frequently, or at least I did. And when I get a headache or a migraine, I throw up or I get super nauseous and it can make me throw up. And so I honestly didn't think anything of it. I was like, oh, this is just another Carissa thing. <laughs> no big deal. In addition to everything else, a headache and some nausea. Remember, I was also still on a ton of medication after my transfer, so I, I chalked it up to that as well. Day nine after our transfer, uh, the pregnancy symptoms that I had were, uh, were a little bit of chin acne still. It was definitely getting better. It was almost there, but not quite. I still had a little bit of a headache and a little bit of nausea, not bad though. Um, I think it was just still lingering from the day before. Um, still a ton of dry mouth, so, so thirsty, nothing would quench it, and I was still crampy and still fatigued. Um, I still had the twinges of pain still, and I'd be like, hmm. I definitely was hopeful. I didn't know for sure if I, you know, if it was all of the medication that I was on that was making me feel this way, but I was very, very hopeful because like I said, I had been pregnant twice before and I had never felt anything like this. I was hopeful. I was also a little guarded, but definitely very hopeful that it meant, you know, that baby stuck. So day 10, our beta day or our pregnancy test day. So the thing with IVF is we get to test way earlier than even when I did when I did IUI. So like I said, I didn't get a chance to do a transfer our first IVF cycle because we didn't get any embryos. So this is my first transfer, the first time I've ever done a test at 10 days after um, trying to conceive instead of 14. So we were in a 10 day wait. So 10 days after transfer, I still had all the same symptoms as day nine, the fatigue, still the cramping, the twinges of pain. I had the dry mouth, the thirst that I just couldn't get rid of. I stopped having the butterflies by day nine. So I didn't have any more butterflies uh, on day 10. Um, and then the headache and the nausea had gotten a lot better. So um, I wasn't feeling that either. It was just pretty much a little bit of fatigue, the cramping, the twinges of pain, and the dry mouth, um, and the thirst. With some remnants of, you know, some little hormonal pimples, but uh, it wasn't bad. I was able to cover those babies right up <laughs> for the most part, at least for the most part. All right, so those are my day-by-day -day pregnancy symptoms after our frozen embryo transfer to our beta or our pregnancy test. Uh, we are so very grateful to be able to um, share this with you guys and that our our transfer cycle worked and that we are pregnant with our little boy at 18 weeks and that his heartbeat is strong. We never thought we would be here. So I want you to know that if you are feeling discouraged or you have been in the same boat, um, I want you to know that we understand we have been there. We fought six and a half years for this um, and I hope that you have the best, most beautiful outcome uh, like hopefully we get to end up having in August. Uh, we love you guys. If you haven't followed us on Instagram, you can do so at Carissa Barzi. I will link it in the description below. Oh, another bump pick. Okay, hold on, hold on. Can you see it? There's the baby. There's the baby. 18 weeks with our baby boy. All right, guys, we'll talk to you later. Toodles.